Welp. A lot happened. Welcome to From Center Eyes, the podcast. My name is Courtney. I'm Jacqueline. And we have to start out this episode with a week ago today, we learned of the extremely tragic and upsetting passing of Matisse Kiblenix, the goaltender in the Columbus Blue Jackets organization on July 4th. So we extend our thoughts and our well wishes to his family, friends, teammates, the whole CBJ organization. It's just very sad and it's going to be sad for a while. Yep, you covered that pretty well. (laughs) Yeah, it it just sucks, but um, that's all you can really say about it at this point it's yeah. just extremely sad they they cleared it as an accident today if you saw that i did see that yeah like yeah. as if people thought it was actually malicious in the first place <laughs> i guess they have to but well i mean i know the police have to make sure right <laughs> but like there was no reason for any fans of any sort to think that it was a malicious act right. that someone intentionally did it ridiculous just, no there just, were most of the comments and such on the internet were good, but there were a few. There's always going to be the few. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So don't be one of those few. Mm-mm. Just be the supportive majority because it's a hard time for everybody. Absolutely. Right now. And there's no good way to transition from something like that. <laughs> no, no, there's but, not. But uh, the playoffs are over. They are. The, the Stanley Cup has been claimed. By who? You tell me. You tell me. You're the one that wanted this to happen. (laughs) I did. I did want this to happen. The Tampa Bay Lightning. And they broke the cup. Went back. They did break the cup. (laughs) See what happens? I didn't want them to win. I didn't want them to go back to back. And now the cup is dented. Yeah, they they dropped it on its head. (laughs) The funny part is it's going to Montreal to be repaired. And it'll be back in Florida next week. Well, that's just horrible. Isn't it? It is. (laughs) Imagine. Uh, That's the only way that Montreal gets the cup is to fix it for Tampa. to fix their mistakes for breaking the cup. For breaking the cup. You have to treat it like a baby. You can't drop it on its head. Well, I mean, it weighs like almost 40 pounds, doesn't it? So. No, I'm just saying like everybody's always carrying it above their heads like like, And I'm like, no, I would drop that shit right on my noggin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'd have to like... (laughs) practice yeah. holding heavy stuff <laughs> lots of but they kind of train to be strong people. well that's true do we know how they broke the cup no it just looks like it was dropped on its head and because it's just dent. it's a flat dent mm-hmm. so like the only way that can really happen is if it hits the floor right you would think so but i'm sure they could have done it in some creative way mm. <laughs> maybe they gave it to tom brady and he threw it <laughs> Good old Tommy Brady. Yeah, because they did a boat parade today, just like uh, the Bucks. Are they the Bucks? They are the Bucks. (laughs) They are the Bucks. That team and that that one sport. (laughs) The one with the Brady. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all the Chicago teams are a mess, so I just, (laughs) I don't really think about sports when I don't have to. I'm forced to a lot today. Oh, so much. But uh, yeah, Tampa won the cup. Yep. And... In all four series this year, Vasilevsky pitched a shutout in the clinching game. I love that for him. I don't, but he won the <laughs> Conn Smythe. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 In Montreal and Tampa. Mm-hmm. Tampa and five. Tampa and five. They did it and at home. You think they threw that game in Montreal? I'm game about four? 99.9% positive. Yeah, you think they wanted to win it at home? Yeah. Yeah. I was talking about that with my brothers. I was like, if you were presented an opportunity to sweep your opponent mm-hmm. in their house or win it at home, what would you do? And all of my brothers had different answers. Really? Yes, because, I mean... I don't remember which one was which, but somebody (laughs) was like, no, just fucking sweep them. Just sweep them. Which, I mean, that makes sense. It probably was. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, yeah, uh, I don't remember if it was one or both of the youngest that were just like, no, you want to win that at home. I think if last year had been a normal year, Mm -hmm. and if their friends and family would have been allowed to go to Montreal, there would have been a sweep. I agree. 
But since they weren't allowed to go to Canada with them, like, why do you want to do that again? Yeah. Game four was kind of painful to watch. Oh, it was so bad. It was, it was really bad. I was just hate watching it by the end. Oh, same. This is such a bad game, but I'm invested. It was really, really bad. I wasted this much time watching it. You could tell that, that Tampa wasn't trying very hard, Mm -hmm. which is sad. Yeah. But it's also sad because the Habs wouldn't just take control of the game and mm-hmm. run with it. Nope. It's, it was right there. They, they were handing it to the them. Taking, and they just kept fucking up. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> They're literally letting you win and you can't do you it. You can't do it. You won't just take it the It took overtime. <laughs> the Lightning didn't want to win and it still and it went still to went overtime. To overtime. <laughs> That's oh. that's sad. Because of course that game would go to overtime. I mean, it was of so bad. So like have more of it. It was painful. It was, it was not not fun to watch. At least the game winning goal came on a pretty play, but I honestly can't even remember what it was at this point. I just was remember that, that Josh, Josh Anderson. Anderson. Yeah. yeah. But the uh, <laughs> I think my favorite tweet after the final was the Stanley Cup final could have been an email. <laughs> I saw that too. Because <laughs> it's so true. It is. It is. It's Everybody true. knew what was going to mm-hmm. happen, even though Montreal was never favored in their first three series mm-hmm. and still won. You knew that it wasn't going to happen. Yeah. Because by the time that Tampa had built up all of the momentum going <laughs> into the cup final, they were going to win. They were going to win. And they pretty much steamrolled Montreal. Yes. Like, Game one was six to one. Yeah. Then it was three to one. Then it was six to three. And then it was the three two overtime win for yep. Montreal. And then one nothing. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, you were just kind of watching Vasilevsky like. Can you not? <laughs> <laughs> he just had to keep making saves, man. Yeah, yeah, he just kind of had to be there. That's true. They weren't really shooting the puck at him very much. The shot count, I wonder what the shot count was. I know it was... For the whole series or just the last game? Well, I was just talking about game four. Game four? Yeah. The one where the Habs won? Yes. I can tell you if you expand on your thoughts that you were having. I can I, look this up. My thoughts were just that I, I don't feel like they were shooting the puck very much. It sure didn't feel like Vasilevsky was getting much traffic. It really did. But... Um, I mean, now you got me curious about the whole series, too. <laughs> I just, uh, let's see. What you got? What you got? The shots on goal in game four <laughs> were <laughs> 34 to 21 in favor of Tampa Bay. Oof, yeah. Felt that one. <laughs> because they had to, like, look like they cared. Right. But just in that first period <laughs> alone, it was... How hard can we look like we're playing without, without actually scoring? Yeah. And Montreal just kept they taking just, penalties. It was so, so bad. They kept putting Tampa on the power play. Oh, my God. And Kucherov was... just kept, like, passing the puck away instead of one-timing it. I'm like, this is how you know. This is how, this you, is know. how you know. Because he's always just taking one timers from that spot. Yes, but no, that's his he's spot. just getting the he's puck and passing it. I'm like, you motherfucker, <laughs> you guys are trying. We to lose. all see what yeah. you're doing right now. <laughs> yeah, it's like Montreal was playing a dumb game with them. They're like, we're gonna keep putting you on the power play, so you have to do this without your family and friends here. Is it illegal to throw a game because of sports betting and whatnot? Um, like, can you get in trouble for that? Probably if it was like confirmed, right? But I I don't know how you but would like, prove yeah, that what would they... unless there was like it, they wrote it on the whiteboard. We <laughs> are going to leave. lose. <laughs> Toss the game. Yeah, yeah. But you could tell. I was honestly surprised that Patrick Maroon tied it up to get yeah. it to overtime. I was like, I was like, damn, they're really gonna make this, this look is like. Why I hate you. <laughs> yeah, Mister Back to Back to Back. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my god. Because he was a blues. Mm -hmm. They went blues. Makes him even more gross. Yeah. Let's see. Now I'm curious. I'm looking up the shots. The the shots in game five. Okay. With Montreal on the brink of elimination. Mm -hmm. The game was only one to nothing. Yep. That one goal was scored in the second period. Yes. The shots were 30 to 22 in favor of Tampa Bay. Montreal. 
<sighs> what are you doing? You got me on your bandwagon, <laughs> and then you disappointed me. Yeah. Why would you do that? Mm. You're not supposed to pull a leaf. You're supposed to, like, do Ooh. the thing. Oh, don't compare them to the leaves. Well, they're Canada's team, after they all. They are Canada's team. Oof. <sighs> You, like, like I said, you knew it was going to happen, mm-hmm. but it still sucked when it did. Oh, yeah. I was at least hoping it would go to six It was just seven. so like, anticlimactic. It really was. Because, like, I was glad that they won, but I was also just really glad that it was over. Like, yeah. Ugh, it just wasn't fun. It wasn't fun hockey. It really was And wasn't. I don't know if that was because it was Montreal that they were playing mm-hmm. or... I don't know what else could have made it really as boring as it was. Yeah. Like, I was sad that they won. Right. But then I was also glad just glad it was over. over, Right. I think it was like a combination of things. Just, it was a boring series. Mm -hmm. There were no, there was no drama. No, none. Um, and then the season has just felt like it's been 10 years long, even though it was a short season. Yeah. It, wow. Yes. You're correct. Very, very correct. Like, (laughs) They started in January. Why was it so drawn out? I don't know. And it's <laughs> July. That's only seven months. Yeah. But, oh hmm. my God. Yep. I blame the taxi squad. That's why this <laughs> season seemed so fucking long. Oh, you want to... I know you've seen this, but um, you want to hear a, hear a fact that you don't like? Oh, okay. Jan Ruda's name is on the cup as many times as Corey Crawford. You know, it's a bad fact, sad fact, if you will. I have felt my soul leave my body many <laughs> times today. Uh, yeah, it's been one of those days, huh? And it doesn't seem like there's anything <laughs> left, but something just left my body. I don't know what it was. It's gone, though. <laughs> <laughs> it was something and it's never coming back. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just... <clears throat> Not that I dislike Jan Ruda in any in any way. I, I but he was him. a Black Hawk, which he just was. makes it worse. Yes. Yes. That's the whole... Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. I liked him when he was here. Mm-hmm. I was sad when he went away. Mm-hmm. But, uh... For Slater Cuckoo. Slater Cuckoo. <sighs> anyway. So what's next? At least that's over. <laughs> it is over. Now we it's the off season. We don't have to talk about the playoffs anymore. Thank God. Oh my goodness! <laughs> We've only recorded a few ca- a few podcasts, podcasts throughout the whole. Just there was always something that was holding us back from recording. There was last week. I was sick. The week before I, it that, wasn't COVID. We- I got COVID tested. It That's wasn't good. that. But um, the week before that, we were both on vacation. We were both on vacation. Yeah. Did we get we one in the before? Week before that. Yeah, I think yeah. we got one in the week before we left. We did because I edited it. Edited the it night it, before. The right? night before I left, okay. which is why I didn't yep. sleep. The yeah. night before driving five and a half hours. <laughs> yeah. That sucked. Yeah. I tried to sleep. Mm-hmm. Could. No. Nah. No. Mm-mm. But now it's the off season. It is. And there are some important dates coming up. Let's hear them. All right. This is this nifty little table was created by Cap Friendly because they are the best. I love Cap Friendly so much. So do I. So today is the 12th. It is. Um, tomorrow, July 13th, is the deadline for clubs to request players with no move clauses to waive their clause for the purpose of the expansion draft. Okay. Because if they don't waive, you have to protect them. But if they do, you can expose them. On the 16th, it is the last day for clubs to place players on waivers prior to the expansion draft. Mm. Trade waiver freeze. I see. The expansion Mm. draft trade waiver freeze because there Mm -hmm. will be a freeze. On of things course. you can do. Also on the 16th, it is the deadline for players to... Oh, it is the deadline for the players to waive their no-move clause. So I thought that was the 12th. That's the deadline for clubs to request them to. So gotcha, then I gotcha, guess gotcha. they get So they get days. like four days to decide? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> That confused me. Mm-hmm. Then the 17th, it is the start of the expansion draft trade waiver freeze. 
So nothing will happen nothing can after happen. the 17th until okay. the expansion draft is complete. Which is? Uh, what's coming up? Okay. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bu- 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 the 17th is also the deadline for first club elected salary arbitration notification. Okay. Also on the 17th is the start of the expansion draft player signing freeze. Okay. Also on the 17th is the deadline for clubs to submit their expansion draft protection lists to the NHL. I can't wait for that one. I know. Mm. I That's know. the 17th? It is. Next oh, Saturday. So okay. The, this coming Saturday. Right. The 18th is the deadline for the NHL to approve and distribute the protection lists to all the clubs, including Seattle. So I guess teams have to submit them on the 17th and the NHL approves them on the 18th? Sure. Hockey! (laughs) Hockey! (laughs) NHL! Also on the 18th, the start of the RFA, UFA interview process, or interview period, for the Seattle Kraken based on players not on the protected lists. The 21st is the deadline for the Seattle Kraken to submit their expansion draft selection list to the NHL. Also on the 21st (laughs) is the deadline for the Seattle Kraken to submit their signed standard player contracts for all RFA, UFA players selected on expiring contracts to the NHL. So if they choose a player from a team and they don't currently have a contract, they have to have them signed, I guess. Hmm. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Also on the 21st, the official announcement of the Seattle Kraken expansion club's selections. Okay. So that is the day, the 21st. What day of the week is that? That is... A Wednesday. A Wednesday. A Wednesday. A Wednesday. Okay. A Wednesday. Sure. Let's go with that. A Wednesday. <laughs> Why not? Why Just not? Just fuck throw it. Throw it in the middle of the week. Fuck it. Wednesday. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yep. Hmm. Uh, the twenty second. The ex- Thursday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the expansion draft. Trade, waiver, and player signing freeze is lifted. Okay. On the 23rd, the first round of the NHL entry draft. Ready? Yes. (laughs) Okay, at least that's on a weekend. Yeah. Not that it really matters all that much. It just makes sense logically for some reason. That will kick off season three of this podcast. It will. Damn. Look at us. Already on season three? I know. Well, season two was kind of short. Wasn't it was, it? yeah, yeah. This I was episode gone for half fourteen, of it. right? No, no, no. I wasn't gone for half of season one. Was I? Well, last year was weird because COVID, COVID and shit. Yeah. yeah, that threw everything off. Yeah, all the counting and stuff. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> yeah, because season two didn't start at the draft just because how everything was all mm-hmm. fucking screwy. It was that. Yeah. It was but that. But we will be able to start anew with this experience. Yes, and hopefully back on a more regular schedule because yes. I don't like this whole like every three and a half <laughs> weeks thing we got going on. I right know, now. and now it's the off season. So yeah. try to get on a schedule in the off season <laughs> when there's no <laughs> hockey being played. I mean, we started it on the off season You're without right. hockey. You're right. We, yeah, hmm. we did that. We, we did. did. That. Kirby Doc. <laughs> yep and then uh joker trade which we just passed yep. the two-year anniversary yeah we did on friday that was a fun thing on time hop to come across still mad about it oh we'll never stop being mad about it nope and he, he deserves better than buffalo <laughs> most people deserve <laughs> better than buffalo <laughs> um on the 24th oh. is rounds two through seven okay so the next day saturday mm-hmm. On the 26th is the deadline for qualifying offers to restricted free agents. So if you're going to qualify them, they have to be given those by the 26th. Okay. The 27th, standard player contracts for the 2020-21 season that were supposed to expire on June 30th 
will expire on July 27th instead. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> also on the 27th, the first buyout period ends. And it's uh, Scott Powers said that it doesn't seem like the Blackhawks will be buying out anybody. Right. So there's that. I think mm-hmm. it was Scott. Was, you know, was, Maybe I think it was it Ben was. Pope. One of the two. Maybe both. It, 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 either way. Yep. Doesn't look like the Blackhawks want to buy anybody out. No, nope. we're stuck with Don, unless yeah. Seattle takes him. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Also on the 27th, RFA contract period begins, where clubs can begin contacting restricted free agents who have received a qualifying offer to discuss a possible offer sheet. Mm, those fun things. <laughs> Do you think there will be any? Offer sheets? Mm-hmm. It's always like a will they or won't they in yeah. the off season because... NHL GMs just don't like to rock the boat no. ever. And I feel like they're just super rare to begin with. It was they weird are. to see. Who was it that got one the other Aho. day? Aho. Aho? Yeah, yeah, yeah Sebastian yeah. Aho. Right. Montreal gave him an offer sheet. From Carolina. Yeah. And it was like a super good deal. So mm-hmm. Carolina was just like, match it. <laughs> got it. <laughs> you got like, it. Like they dude. really could have screwed Carolina mm-hmm. over, but they but, just uh, made their job easy because the contract was already right there. Mm-hmm. They just had to... Yeah. Yeah, there's that. Montreal. Montreal. Look. What's <laughs> doing? If you're not going to get that right, at least win the cup. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. When was that? Was that two years ago now? What? When that the offer, offer sheet? sheet? Yeah, it must have been. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, because it wasn't It wasn't. Uh-huh. Man, it was that, pre-COVID, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. That feels like it was a lot more <laughs> Like recent. five years ago. And also that... <laughs> I feel like that's everything. Yes. COVID has ruined the concept of time. Mm -hmm. It's like everything before today was either (laughs) like an hour ago or 10 years ago. Yep. No in between. I have no idea. That's it. You could tell me either one. And I would believe it. Okay. Sure. Sure. That's fine. Um, On the 28th, the RFA, UFA signing period begins. So free agency opens on the 28th. Which is a <laughs> Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Okay. Right yeah. In the middle Let's of the week. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> I don't have the answers. They could have done the 31st. That's Saturday. Yeah. They, they could have done the first. It's it, Sunday. It's Sunday. Nope. Wednesday. Mm, no. E- even like a Monday would have been nice. Right. But a no, Wednesday. Wednesday. Right in the middle of the in week. In the middle. Smack dab in the center. Real dumb. Yeah. (sighs) Whatever. So, oh, also on the 28th, qualifying offers open for acceptance. Right. So things are going to start happening. Soon. 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 Yep. But uh, we have news about Jonathan Taves, finally. Yeah. So he, this is while we were on vacation, Mm -hmm. of course. Because why else? When else would he have come out? <laughs> yes. And he posted a video on his Twitter mm-hmm. saying that he's been back skating and he's excited to be back. But he has chronic immune response syndrome. Yes. Which basically just means his body would not heal from yeah. anything. Mm-hmm. Which is horrifying. I can't even imagine. Me like, either. That's an, and it's scary because it's it's one of those things that you don't know if you're going to recover from. Exactly. Like, they don't really know how to treat something like that. Mm-hmm. You I mean, just have to, like, hope for the best. <laughs> which I, is so scary, yes. especially with his career and everything else that kind of yeah. rides on his health. Like, Yeah, and being a hockey player, they get injured quite often. Oh, yeah, it's not rare. And even if it's not, like, an injury, they're always tweaking right, something. Right, yeah. So that's well, crazy. I mean, I sprained my ankle getting up from the chair at the at the nail salon a couple I weeks mean, ago. I mean, fair. Fair. My foot was asleep, and I didn't know that it was, and I went to take a step and just full weight uh, right on the side of my right foot, and it popped so loud that it echoed in the nail salon. That was fun. Mm-hmm. I healed from it a lot faster than I thought I would. That was like two days before we left for vacation. Yeah, it was and the I day was, before I left. Yeah, because it was Thursday. I got mm-hmm. my nails done on the Thursday before we left. And now I'm out of money, and I can't get them filled, so they'll probably just all fall off. Not too often they falling <laughs> off. <laughs> well, yeah, they came off a while ago. But <laughs> what was my point? Oh, yeah, it's easy to just tweak the human body. It really is. I mean, obviously for them, they're a little more 
in shape and prepared for these things. But but hockey still is very hockey, unpredictable. Yeah. Yeah. So he says he hopes to be back for the upcoming season. Yeah, they they pretty much made it sound he was going to be ready for training camp. Yeah, unless something goes sideways, which is always like, possible. But. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I'm intrigued like taking a whole year off of playing. Mhm. What is he going to look like when he comes back? I have no idea. <laughs> That's kind of scary to think about in its own. Right? It is. Because, like, I mean, great players are going to be great players. Of course. But he is getting older. Yes. He's in his 30s now. So it's not like he's just in his prime. Right. And, like, he suspects that this is a long haul side effect from COVID. He had COVID? He believes he did last February. Okay. Because he was sick. Right. Yeah. I don't mm. remember exactly what the article said, but I know that it said that he believes it's a long haul effect from COVID. Which is terrifying. Quite. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't yeah. even know what else to say about that. That's right. just really scary. Yeah. If you want to read the whole article, it was Mark Lazarus's article on The Athletic. He talked to Taves and got all that. Um yeah, it's just a very interesting position to be in. And I guess it did make sense when they were like, mystery illness. Yeah, because nobody of... really knew what was going on. They weren't yeah. hiding it. Right. They truly did not know what was going on. And unless you have this or somebody close to you has this, who has ever heard of chronic immune response syndrome? Right. It sounds like a make-believe it does. bullshit answer. Yeah. But no, I'm... <laughs> I can't even imagine what Ugh. being told that's your diagnosis. Right, like, like, okay, what do like, I exactly, do? Exactly. How do how how do we fix this? Like, yeah. is this just what it's like now? This is my life. Like, I don't know. Mm. It's scary. It is, but at least we have news, and people can stop asking now. Yes, that is such. Just a, a, it feels like a big weight has been lifted. I don't. <sighs> I want to say off the organization, but oh no, no they we're not they put a whole that. other one on them. We're not going to do I mean, that. They they put it on them a long time ago, but but now we're finding out. And, um, yeah, yeah. So well, also in that article, they, Mark asked Taves about it, and because a lot of people were like, "This is very suspicious timing." That's what I was going to say. This comes is that out. they were going to they were trying to cover it up. Yeah, with Taves like, look, Taves is back. Right, like, and now nobody's going to talk about the sexual assault allegations. Yeah, it's like, like throwing duct tape on a flood. Like, all, all better. <laughs> good, good job, guys. All better, some flex seal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he asked him about it. I, I think I have the article pulled up. Um, nope, this isn't the one. Uh oh But he said that he didn't know about it until the guy left, Okay, I believe. Aldrich or, one yeah. of, or the player? Yeah. Aldrich? Aldrich. Huh. Because it came out, I don't even know if it was the player who said it. Somebody said that everybody knew. Right. Like everybody knew. Yeah. And then Taves said that he didn't know until after Aldrich was gone because one day he was just gone after celebrating and like, okay. I, it's hard to talk about it without anything like concrete confirmed right because i believe the player oh absolutely believe survivors 100 percent. yeah but also what do they have to gain i'm actually, sorry to cut you off but like oh no you're fine what would they possibly have to gain by accusing someone of these right, things right like, and no. especially they weren't the only one to right accuse. i yeah. don't think it was the player in the lawsuit that said it i think it was Either Brent Sopel or, oh God, who was the other one? Nick Boynton. Because mm. they were also on the team in 2010. I believe right. one of them was the one that said that everybody, everybody knew. knew. I could be wrong. Hmm. I've like been trying to keep it in the <laughs> peripherals of my brain mm -hmm. as much as possible so I don't explode because every new thing that comes out is so upsetting. Yes. That's also why my soul has felt like it's just been leaving my body today mm -hmm. because I've been trying not to think about this team and then they forced me to think about the team for so long. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. But, um, so, like, the whole front office knew. Mm hmm And Stan Bowman still has a job. Mm-hmm. 
there aren't many people left in the organization. Right. Because McDonough's gone. McDonough's gone. Which, when... Maybe it was on the SDP. Like, something about this, I guess, had come out a while ago. Really? But I don't remember hearing anything about it. And then they were saying, like, everybody was surprised by the firing of John McDonough last year. Like, maybe it was because of the... Something to do with that. Hmm. Yeah, because you have to, like, file these things with the court before they, like, officially go through so the team would know. I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. But Stan Bowman and Al McIsaac, I believe, are the only ones that are actually left. Right. But, like, Bowman's GM. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, which, (laughs) uh, (laughs) going back to those dates I was just reading off. Mm Mm-hmm. He's going to be in front of a microphone a lot. I hope he gets absolutely bombarded with questions about it. I hope nobody asks him about anything except for this. Yeah. Because he can't just duck everything, right? I'm, Unless he just gets up and leaves, which I'm would be... I'm sure that he's going to say, we can't comment on this while it's still an ongoing investigation. <laughs> just from everything else that they've ever said when something has gone plowed well, Yeah, and... I mean, does, is, doesn't he have experience with being a lawyer or something? Or did I read that? Bowman? Yeah. I don't think so. No. I could be wrong. No, I'm probably wrong, but... Batman's a lawyer. Oh, maybe that's what I thought. Maybe. And I... Anyway, but like... He hasn't even been getting asked about it all that much. Yeah. And... It's so frustrating because you know they can't really say anything right now but Mm -hmm. you have to i feel like you have to say something you can't just act like it's not a thing that happened or you can't act like it's not currently happening like Mm -hmm. not that the sexual assault is currently happening i just mean like the whole trial and everything Mm -hmm. and the investigation like yeah the most recent thing is just their file or their motions to dismiss mm -hmm. uh, one for the statute of limitations and one because they didn't have uh, what's the term? Like they weren't required by law to report it because it wasn't a minor, right? Or a dependent adult or an elder. Yeah. Which fuck a statute of limitations? Let me just say that first right of all, off the top. <laughs> let me just throw that out there yes. because one thousand percent. Ten years doesn't get rid of what you've done. No. Like. No, I, and I've sometimes it takes that long for somebody to come to forward. come out and say it. Yeah, I, I've never understood why statute of limitations is a thing. Like, who is that helping except for the offender? It's probably offenders that put that into law. To be fair, Ugh, it's just yeah, it's mm. it's fucking gross. Sorry. It's like double jeopardy. Like <laughs> yeah, right. Both of them are bad. Um, but yeah, so they filed those motions to dismiss. And it's frustrating. Well, it's frustrating for a lot of reasons. <laughs> it's frustrating because they haven't owned up to anything, mm-hmm. which <sighs> there's really no good way to say this, <laughs> like without sounding horrible. Yeah. In the eyes of a defense lawyer, okay. they're doing the right thing. <laughs> In the court of mm-hmm. public opinion, <laughs> mm-hmm. they're fucking up massively. Oh, absolutely. So it's frustrating because they are correct. <sighs> That's so painful, but yes. In their motions to dismiss this because, yes, the statute of limitations had passed and, yes, they weren't required by law to report it. <sighs> I'm just That's why it's hard to talk about because like they're doing what makes sense legally. Legally, but it's fucked up Mm -hmm. and people need to be held accountable and people need to lose their jobs. Yes. Everybody that knew. Everybody that knew fire on. Everybody that knew. And then you had Mark Bergevin being asked about it during the playoffs and he was like, I knew nothing about that and you can what did he say? You can uh, 
quote that or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Severely yeah. misquoting him for <laughs> telling them to run with that. But yeah. he was adamant that he didn't know anything, which was just a weird quote in general. Mm-hmm. Not like I'm sorry to the victim. Blah, right. Blah, blah. Not, like, well, no, because if you if you say that, you're admitting that something happened. It did. By, by, <laughs> by to calling a lot of them, people. <laughs> by calling them a victim or saying that something. I know that, that you're right. I I hate every part of I know this, what? <laughs> like I said that's why this is so hard to talk about because again they're doing what makes sense for them for legally the, legally yes but it's gross Morally, it's and, fucking disgusting <sighs> yes and I, I'm <laughs> it's so hard because I'm sick of the people on Twitter that are like you can't say that they're what is it guilty until Oh, yeah. Innocent until proven guilty. Yeah, yeah. Like, a possible offender. Why would you... Why are you so far up his ass? Like, that's not helping... That doesn't get you anything. You have no attachment to this guy. There's no reason. He was a video coach (laughs) for, like, two years. Yeah. For the organization. Right. And before that, well, during that time, he was the video coach for the U.S. Olympic team in 2010 Mm -hmm. when they faced off against Canada in the Mm -hmm. final and the golden goal and all that. that, that. I guess his dad works in the San Jose Sharks organization. That I didn't know. I just found out that recently. But I just don't understand people. Okay, no. It's going to hurt me to say this, too. Because it is innocent until proven guilty. Like, you're not supposed to. Yes. You know, <sighs> but he admitted but, to other ones. Like, he hasn't admitted to this one in Chicago, not Chicago I but, believe. But it was, like, Ohio or something, wasn't it? Was it Michigan? Michigan. Michigan? One yeah, of those Michigan. Midwestern states. So, like, it happened. It, <sighs> and this isn't just going to randomly pop up no. at all of these different places where he's worked. Right. And again, people that are accusing him have nothing to gain by accusing him. Mm-mm. If anything, it's just putting them in the public eye. Well, most of them, if not all of them, are... There's one that came out explicitly, right? That's not anonymous? Or was it an not anonymous article? Not with the Blackhawks. Oh, maybe it was an anom- anonymous article. Yeah, maybe one of the other there. players. They got, like... Some of the articles I was reading got, like, real descriptive mm-hmm. without saying the yeah. person's name. Mm-hmm. They were like, it was this year, this right. was their position. I'm mm-hmm. like, that's not very, <laughs> it just felt gross. Yeah. It's like, you can take a guess at mm-hmm. who it is. Oh, for sure. For sure. And in that case, I believe it was one of the schools. Mm-hmm. So they were a minor. Right. Which is even more gross like well, all around. Wait, schools like high school? Or I thought it was a college thing. Because that would make them not minors. I don't know. I don't know either. I'm not fully informed on this situation. Honestly, but there's so many accusations. I can't that's, keep them that's straight. That's just it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, it's hard to keep track of who's saying what about yeah, it. Because like, there's so many people saying There's Blackhawks. There's um, the college in Ohio. Is mm-hmm. Miami University or University of Miami? Something like that. I don't know. I can never remember which one it yeah. is. And, like, which one's in Florida and <laughs> right. which one's the Ohio, <laughs> Ohio one. And then there's Michigan. Mm-hmm. And I believe he was the coach for a high school team. I th- think you're right. In Michigan. Yeah. Because I think that was the or article that was... a junior was, team or yeah, junior or something. I feel like that was the article that went pretty descriptive on yes. what exactly happened. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Uh, we don't need to talk about that. It's just like, there's so many different facts flying around Mm -hmm. and i'm sure that the journalists writing about it have actually just like written it out in order (laughs) actually explained it so it all makes sense but in my head it's just like all of these different tidbits just floating around in this hellscape of yes horrible Mm -hmm. and i hate it and every new thing that comes out from this team is like it makes sense while you're doing it yeah and anybody else in your position would also be doing that Mm -hmm. but at the same time you need to do something to hold people accountable and that 
the easiest thing you could do is fire Stan Bowman. That yeah. literally the easiest thing you could do. Like that would get all of this off your back, honestly. And like, everybody would be like, okay, okay. he knew he fucked up. Good He's gone. job. Ta-da. Like somebody else, like the team still needs to be held accountable and all of that. But that's where you start. At least you show that you're doing something. Mm-hmm. But by doing that, it's an admission of guilt or an admission that this happened. And it just. With true, but I feel like with what they have filed, like their motions that they've filed is also admitting guilt because they didn't say, no, we didn't right. do this. Like yeah. it's statute of limitations or right. we weren't required to report this once we learned of it. These laws you are know? so fucked up. Did you see Bill Cosby's getting released? I did. Yep. Yep. It was on some technicality, wasn't it? Yeah. I read it and then I immediately pushed it out of my brain. So I think I that happened while we were on vacation too. It did. It did. I was in. Uh, I was in the UP when mm-hmm. that announced, and my phone buzzed. I think it was like CNN or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, the the system is not friendly to uh, victims or Mm-mm. survivors or whatever they would prefer to be called in their own little situation. Right. Yeah, it really isn't. All that being said, fuck anybody who knew. Yes. Fuck anybody who's covering up for it. Fuck, fuck anybody that just, Mm -hmm. uh, mm, it's. I wonder when uh, Joel Quenville is going to be asked about it. Mm, Yeah. Like you were the head coach. Right. If everybody else knew, there's no way that you didn't know. And if you as the head coach did not know. Right. Something is weird something, there. Yeah, something's not adding up. Mm-mm. Uh, it's... <laughs> Sexual assault is more common in males than you would think. and Yeah, nobody talks about it. Nobody because... talks about it because toxic masculinity and all that. And the amount of people I have read saying... It's a professional hockey player. Couldn't you just, like, overpower him? Have we not read up on Terry Crews and how he was assaulted and he mm-hmm. pushed the guy and he filed lawsuits against him and all that and he still didn't get anything out of it? hmm Like. And also, like, just with how hockey culture is, mm-hmm. they're so, like, can't disrupt anything, have right. to everything for the the team and like it was surprising that they even came out to it to the team like Mm -hmm. while it was happening right like that is surprising and it shouldn't be Mm -hmm. but it is with how hockey culture goes and he probably threatened them with ice time oh absolutely he was in a position of power yeah he was a coach exactly so A survivor is a survivor is a survivor. Right. Gender, sex, any of that does not matter. It -hmm. doesn't matter. It it can happen to anybody. Absolutely. No matter how much you want to think. Anybody can be an offender. Right. No matter how much you want to think it couldn't happen to you in whatever given situation. Right. It's possible. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Like nothing. I don't know. I I I hate talking about it. Yep. And like, it's I, just, go ahead. I don't, I don't know. As a survivor, I stand with survivors, and I think that's the that's where I'm going to leave that. Yes, and I just I have no confidence that this team will do anything, which makes everything worse. Mm-hmm. You know, like if they had proven in the past that they would actually handle situations like this with some sort of morality or anything, then I'd be like, okay, they're just letting the legal process play out, and then we will see something happen. Mm -hmm. I highly doubt Stan Bowman gets fired. I think he will be the GM, or he will resign. Mm. Yeah. Which, if that was going to happen, it probably would have already. I don't know. I feel like if they're going to fire him, he's going to try to get that that leg up. Like, no, I'm going to quit before you can fire me. They're probably because going to give him that opportunity. The opportunity, right. Yeah, all so likelihood. They'll be like, 
you can't have this job anymore. Right. Here are the resignation papers mm-hmm. drawn up for you. Yep. Because feel that. that's how sports works. Except for the guy in Florida that they made get in a cab after the game or whatever. <laughs> The new coach of the New York Rangers, <coughs> the one. Gerard Gallant. Yep. <laughs> yeah, they just said, "Now nah, you're done. You're done. You're done. To get out of here. Nobody knows why, but you're gone. You're gone. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, is there anything a little lighter we can talk about? Um, Who did the Ice Hogs just sign last week? Last week? Yeah. They had a player signing. Yes, they did. Which one was? Oh, Michael Crudel. That's the one. <laughs> the rookie defender. Yeah, yeah. He's the youngest on guy on the Wednesday. team. Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they always announce their player signings on a Wednesday. On a Wednesday. Everything's <laughs> on a Wednesday, apparently. Well, no, they got a guy today. They did. From, from Edmonton. Edmonton. Well, Edmonton's AHL team. Right. For future system. considerations. Right. Whatever that means. It's basically just like, eh, here you go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's just a player who's going to leave anyway. They're yeah, like, here, we okay, fulfilled our him. future considerations. And we're just like, hey, I'll take him. Yeah. But uh, we are 46 minutes into this, and we, we haven't, haven't talked about the biggest news nope, yet. <laughs> nope, we've been, we've been holding off on that one. It was the last thing on my list, so I figured, wait until the end. Okay. So, um, Duncan Keith was traded today. He was... He, uh, he went to Edmonton. Yeah. Which makes sense when he wants to be closer to his son. Yeah, so he requested a trade from the Hawks to be closer to his son who lives in BC because he saw him, like, once in a five-month span yeah. this past year. Yeah. That, did I that, read that that's right? That's exactly, yeah. And yep. that's just hard on anybody because oh, of the travel restrictions between Canada between, and the U.S. Yeah. and Because the border's technically still closed, right? Yes. I think i believe like even it's, for players like they're not exempt i know it's not fully open at least right there's yeah but yeah so he Either requested way. a trade because of that and so he is gone yeah. and it's strange mm-hmm. like the news broke also while we were on vacation, that they were looking yeah, for a trade right. partner. And everything happened while we were gone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Typically how it goes. Yeah. We leave and the world explodes. Yeah. I had gotten back from fishing. I was just, like, going about my time, like, washing my hands from all the <laughs> all gross the, fishing yeah. stuff. And I look at my phone and I see that the Hawks are exploring trades for Duncan Keith. And I was like, what the fuck is <laughs> happening? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. What? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a thing. And now it's a real thing. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I didn't see him ever being traded. I figured he would just Retire finish. Retire from... Yeah. Yeah. But I guess he still thinks he he's still got wants a to go. lot of he's still got playing in him. Gas in the tank. Yeah. What was that quote that he gave? I'm not sure, but I know what quote you're thinking of. Mm. But after... Seabrook retired and Crawford retired and Shaw retired. I was kind of surprised that he was like, no, trade me Mm. instead of just, okay, I'm done hanging him up. It's been a good ride. I'm going to be 38 in a couple days, I think. (laughs) Yeah, Friday. Yeah. He turns 38 on Friday. Yeah. All right. So Duncan Keith on questions about how much he has left in the tank. I feel like I've got a lot. Once we hit the ice, we're going to see who's a step behind out there. I'm not much for talking. (laughs) Oh, Keith. Oh, Keith. But um, it's, like, I still don't know how I feel about it. Okay, so the full trade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's lay it all out. out. Lay it all out. <laughs> Duncan Keith and Tim Soderlund to the Edmonton Oilers for Caleb Jones and a conditional third round pick. If they make it to what, the third to, round, to or, the they, third or round? they win three rounds. If they go to the <laughs> Stanley Cup final and Keith plays top four minutes, then, then they get a, a second, second. Tr- a second round. I hate conditional picks. They're so dumb. Yep. So it's Caleb Jones and a third because it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's Seth Jones's brother. Mm-hmm. That's a whole different <laughs> ordeal all in of itself. But um, yeah, I still, I'm just not sure how I feel about it. I've had all day to process this information. But you were too busy focusing on your stupid Canada team. 
Yeah, well, <laughs> they've been good to us. So. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> they have. Thank you, Montreal. Thank we, you, Montreal. We do love you. Yes. I figured... I had to at least give them something. Yeah. Because the last sort video of I made yeah, was mm-hmm. before we went on vacation, right. which was thankfully the night that they won the series against Vegas. Mm-hmm. I was like, please mm-hmm. let this end in six so I'm not gone when the series is over. Right. Another reason I didn't sleep that night because I had to film and edit that and get it out mm-hmm. while also doing the podcast. Yeah, it was a lot. The things that I do for you. <laughs> and you couldn't even win the cup. Mm. But... uh it felt weird to just like leave it at that right so i figured i'd give them a nice little wrap up video which i will upload while i'm editing this episode um yeah so i was doing that while waiting for the damn official trade announcement to come out Mm -hmm. because everybody was like oh duncan keith for jones and a third and then in swoops ben pope and he's like i'm hearing that there might be a minor contract involved as well i was like well, like, because we've been Who hearing, <laughs> we've been hearing about this possible trade for weeks. Yeah, and there was just this morning. It was just like another. We're we're hearing probably Edmonton. It could take some time, and then all, and of, then a all of a sudden it, it was like, nope, done deal. Yeah, but it wasn't official. But it was done. Right, he'd signed the paperwork, but it wasn't official. And they're they're like, well, well who's who all is involved? Can you just. Let us know that. When I tell you the amount of anxiety <laughs> I was feeling, I was like, who the fuck are they trading away? Uh-huh. Like, we know it's Keith. Of course. But. Are they going to fuck this up so badly and trade Oh, it's some <clears throat> A-plus prospect and then all of a sudden it goes from being a fleecing by Chicago. Uh-huh. I don't want to even give him credit no. because we don't like him. No, we'll just uh, say Chicago. The GM we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh a fleecing by Chicago to being like Chicago fucking up majorly because I feel like that's always how it goes. I'm like, oh, this is a good trade. And then a shoe drops at the last minute and they're like, Stephen Johns is leaving. I'm like, what the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) It's always how it goes with this team. It's true. It's true. Just like how the trade deadline two years ago is almost over. It's past the trade deadline time and all the trades trickle in after that. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, Robin Leonard's gone. Like, what yeah, the fuck? There was that, too. I forgot. So I don't trust this team happened. until anything is official. Hmm. So everybody was like, oh, this is a great trade. I'm right. like... It was like 1.45 today, and we were like, we should probably record, huh? Yeah. And we're just sitting there waiting for it to be official. Yeah. And it wasn't official until like 6 p.m., wasn't it? No. No? No? It, it was... Yeah. Y- yes. <laughs> I was saying no, like it wasn't official till forever. I think you were right, right around yeah. six. Yeah. But I so. had like all of my notes written out for that trade. Right. And it was like three o'clock and like, I'm still waiting. So I <laughs> scrolled through Twitter for a little bit. Still waiting. So like, fuck it. I'm doing this Montreal wrap up video. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. So I wrote like four pages of notes, filmed that. It was an hour long raw footage, cut it down to like a half hour. Got it all... Got it halfway edited, and then the official thing was released. I was like, you've got yeah. to be fucking kidding me. Yeah, Why was... did this take so long? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, but Timmy Soderlund is gone. I just had horrible... Big time Timmy Tim. Yes. Big I... time Timmy Tim. I had horrible images in my brain of Brandon Hagel being involved. Oh, absolutely. Oh, no. Oh, no. See? That's oh, why no. I was having an issue. <laughs> Courtney, you just, I know. You just ruined my night and it's not even possible anymore. <laughs> well, it's I always do. possible. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't know that I could root for them next year. If they, if they traded him away, Hegel, if they gave him away. Yeah. Yeah. No. He's their top fucking prospect guy. Really. Not even a prospect. He's top. Top little guy. Uh-huh. Little guy top. Up top. Number one. Number one bullshit. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to do it. We don't talk about that team. We already covered that. <laughs> yeah, we they no longer exist in my brain. Until I get on Twitter and see the broken cup again. The broken cup. Uh, but yeah, I don't... But yeah, I really Hagel. don't think that I could. Like, Corey's not here anymore. Nope. And then they go ahead and trade the next guy that was, like, maybe up in line to be my favorite player. Joker? What? What? No, if they traded Hagel. Oh, if they traded. Got him. Yeah. Got, got you. Got like, <laughs> I I don't know. What, this, what's holding you here? 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, they've just, they've been so ingrained in my soul yeah. for 11 years now mm -hmm. that you can't just unstick them. Yeah. They've melted into me and I don't like it. A little harder than Velcro, huh? A little bit. It's like cement. They're cemented into me. Mm -hmm. And so I cannot remove them. Mm -hmm. And I wish I could with all the bullshit around this team right now. Mm -hmm. But I cannot. But if they did that. But if they did that. If they did that. We're fucking up some concrete is what we're doing. <laughs> thanks for the ride. I'm now a... Toronto Maple Leafs and Montreal Canadiens fan. Oh, dear Figure goodness. that one out. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> you went full Canada, huh? And I live in the Midwest. Yeah, not do, even huh? Canada. Like huh. But for real. <laughs> that would be You could root for, for What? You could root for Edmonton? Why would I do that? If they I am already Bagel. a Leafs fan. Why would I root if for Edmonton? That is so much pain. Bagel. Why would... No. I'm saying if Bagel would have been a part of what happened today... Uh, I see. <laughs> no, Could see, that's that's how I became a fan of the Leafs. I know. Was when Dave Boland went there. I know. So then it would just be happening all over again. Yeah. And I would Full probably circle. introduce another decade of pain to the Edmonton Oilers because it's just following me now. As if they weren't already going to be in a decade of pain. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Poor they, Connor, they would have somebody Connor. to blame it on. <laughs> yeah. I hopped on the Habs bandwagon. They go and fucking lose in the final. Yeah, they did. Hmm. I had been reluctant for th two rounds. I wasn't rooting for them in the first round. Right. I had been reluctant in the next two to say that I was rooting for them outwardly. Uh -huh. And I was like, I want them to win against Tampa. Hmm. And look what happened. Yeah, you did say you weren't going to name it, mm -hmm. and then you named it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, when there's only two teams left, it's kind of hard not to be like... <laughs> right, and it was clear I was aggressively against, against Tampa, Tampa winning. Yes. yes. I feel like I'm just talking around this topic because I don't know how to process the fact that Duncan Keith is gone. Because yeah. Because it is like the mark of the end of an era. Well, yeah, because Tain, Tain, Tain. Tain and Caves... <laughs> Tain and Caves the are the only ones I've left. Said that. <laughs> <laughs> They're the only ones left from the cup run. That's it. Cup runs. That's it. Them yeah. and Danny Bowman. Well, he's not a player. Nope. Everybody else gone though. Mm. Well, I guess Rocky, but well. <sighs> Yeah. It's gonna be fucking weird not having him on the ice. Extremely. Because for one, he was very rarely injured. Yeah. And of course he wasn't a healthy scratch. Mm-hmm. And he was so, on the ice like 25 minutes a night. Yeah. It's like Duncan Keith. You pair the rookies with him. Right. And, yeah. Oh, God. Don't, oh, don't, God. don't. All I see you're defense. dying. You're dying. Stop doing it. What? Our defense, our defensive lineup. Have you thought about what it actually looks like now? Well, yes, because they made a list of who had to be chosen to be protected. protected? Oh, yeah. Between like Caleb Jones, Connor Murphy, Calvin DeHaan and Nikita Zadorov. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest fucking There's choice. There's Stillman in the world. and Oh, Stillman too. There was one more. Maybe the last one was Jones. Maybe. I don't know. Like the two guys you don't protect are DeHaan and Zadorov. Clearly. I saw people leaving Stillman off and protecting Zadorov. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> He's the one without the contract. We're gonna end up paying right. him more yeah. than what we would pay Stillman. Who's not making very much. Mm -hmm. People don't think that far. They don't. Because their brains don't work like yours does. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think many people's brains work like They don't. Does. They don't. So I already had the cat friendly pages okay. pulled up. Because I knew, mm -hmm. like every episode, that I'd be going back to it. <laughs> of course. Also, they have, I don't know if this is new or if I just never noticed it before, but they have this nifty little column of how players got acquired. Oh, wow. I think that is new. I think it is. And I noticed it today when I went to check all oh, of these that's different that's nifty. Things. Yeah, so you know if, like, you drafted the player or if you got them in a trade. Or I like if you that. Them, right? I like that a Kid lot. Friendly's the fucking best. Yeah, they are. So, oh, God. And it's a free website. How? It's a free How is website. It free? Good for them. For real. Thank you, Cat Thank Friendly. You. Thank you. Though somebody, 
some team will probably sign them and they'll take Cat Friendly away from oh, us, no. just like every other website that has come before no. them. But Cat Friendly has done Stay. it better than them all. <sighs> <laughs> so our defense right now is <sighs> our highest paid defenseman is Calvin DeHaan. Yeah. Calvin DeHaan, Connor Murphy, mm-hmm. Riley Stillman. Oh, he signed a three-year deal. I thought it was two. My bad. That's only 1.35. <laughs> People are fucking crazy if you think he's <laughs> Zadora over. Anyway, <laughs> Ian Mitchell, Wyatt Kalnick, Adam Boquist, Caleb Jones, and I'm pretty sure he's listed in Rockford, but I would throw Nicholas Bodin in there mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. That is our defense. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> 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 and we've been saying for like two years now how Keith really hasn't been great, but he just kind of stabilized things. Oh, yeah. There. He was kind of like the glue. Yeah. And he allowed everybody else to be like pushed down the lineup because he was always going to be the number one. Of course. But now he's not. So <laughs> no, Connor no, Murphy mess. is our number one defenseman. Um... Jacqueline, this is a problem. Yes. Yes, it is. And, oh, God, I don't, <laughs> I guess we have to go there. So what? the rumored way to fix this problem is by trading for Seth Jones, who is Caleb Jones' oh, brother. God, we're going there, huh? <sighs> I, <laughs> who would we trade for him? I don't want to talk about it, because then I will be a full-time Columbus fan, because it'll probably be Bagel. Don't you fucking dare. Look, this team <gasps> likes to hurt me, okay? Mm. It's all they do is hurt me. Mm. So they will see the deal that I don't want to be made in acquiring Seth Jones because it doesn't fucking make sense. Mm-mm. And they will trade away Bagel. Did don't, you? don't do it. When his contract only runs through this season, mm-hmm. like they could sign Jones as a free agent next summer. Yeah. But if they got him this summer, they'd have to trade for him. Mm-hmm. Which doesn't make any sense with the way that we're in a rebuild. <laughs> yes. Are, are they admitting yet that we're in a rebuild? They admitted it in the last off season, and okay. they said everybody Is the rebuild knew. over now. <laughs> I guess so. We got rid of Keith. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's Seabrook it's retired. Over. Shaw retired. <laughs> We just told them all to retire, and now no. our average age just got pushed younger. So rebuild over. Average, I was just looking at it. It's like 24.6. Is it? I, I know it's down here somewhere. Oh. Uh, oh, you were so close. 24.8. Oh. Damn. You were up by 0.2. Maybe I was just looking at the the defenseman. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, yeah. That's down here. 24.6. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Got it. But, like... <sighs> We we would have to give up something that doesn't make sense to give up. Yeah. To get Seth Jones, because we don't have, like, any great assets to give up. Mm-hmm. So it would be dumb, and it doesn't make sense, because he's trending downward, and it's like they're just going big name fishing. I hate that. Me too. I hate that. Especially because it's not just signing a free agent, or I guess Dougie Hamilton has been rumored to. But even that wouldn't make sense. It's not the kind of defenseman we need. We have plenty of offensive defensemen. Right. Why is a defensive defenseman so hard to come by? Um, I don't know. I think over the years, the things that teams have looked for has shifted, and so they see a guy who can, like, skate and handle the puck really well and their eyes just light up even if they're not actually good defensively and like the kid should probably be a forward but (laughs) plays defense yeah so then everybody's just like i want to be an offensive defenseman because then i'll get drafted and and then you get these super underrated guys johnson and yeah like you gotta have who also might retire this summer. Yeah. Well, he was super injured for a couple of years. Yeah. Couldn't really stay in the lineup. It's like everybody's gone. Are we getting old? Yes. Oops. Yeah. And Pat Foley's retiring after yeah, this year. Yeah, after this year. Like, we said that would be an end of an era. 
We did. I thought we were still going to have Keith for another year after that. No. No, he gone. He gone. It's strange. Quite. And it's not even anything against Caleb Jones. No. Because I don't honestly know very much about him other than he was a healthy scratch in the playoffs for Edmonton this year who got swept by Winnipeg so he couldn't even crack that lineup but it's also Edmonton Mm -hmm. and they don't always do the right thing (laughs) so the scouting report from 2015 on elite prospects for Caleb Jones a versatile two-way defenseman that can fill many different roles and team needs in certain situations due to his workmanlike approach to his position. Possesses a tireless motor and is aggressive on the blue line. Physicality and board battles are the anchors that hold his game together. <laughs> Works hard in all situations and is a step ahead in problem solving. Exhibits good mobility, a quick, accurate shot from the point, and an active stick. All in all, a heads-up defenseman who plays a solid, smart, all-around game. But that was from 2015. This guy's good at everything. Right. He's 24. He's 6'1". Okay. He's only making $850,000, which Mm. is nice. Yes. Um, Last year for the Oilers, he played 33 games. He had zero goals and four assists. And let's see. What did Keith do last year? He played 54 games. He had four goals and 11 assists for 15 points. Um, The year before that, Caleb Jones split time between Edmonton and Bakersfield. He played 43 games with the Oilers, scoring four goals and five assists for nine points. And in the AHL, he played 14 games and had three goals and eight assists for 11 points. Um, I don't really know. Like, he's not going to replace Keith. No. That would be a very... Those are some big boots to fill. They are. uh, Also, just now clicked in my mind that both him and his brother, Seth, are defensemen. (laughs) Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. I feel like usually you see, like, one's a forward, one's a defenseman, or... They're both forwards, but both defensemen. That's interesting. Put them on a pair. No. (laughs) God. I don't know what their plan is. I don't know if they're just hoping that the young defensemen take a step in this offseason or if they're actually going to do that God-forbidden trade. They better fucking not. I hope somebody woos the pants off of the Columbus Blue Jackets with an offer that is not Chicago. Yeah. I can't. I can't handle. I couldn't handle Bagel going anywhere. Why wouldn't they go after Jack Eichel with Seth Jones on the table? Columbus, like I thought you were talking about the Hawks. Oh fuck no! I was like, Courtney, no, 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 Courtney, no. What are we doing? No, I'm blowing this shit up. <laughs> <laughs> no, why wouldn't Columbus go after Jack Eichel when they have Seth Jones on the table? Like they need that number one center. They do. And yeah, he's injured and needs surgery and all that. But once he comes back, he's still Jack Eichel. Right. And you have Seth Jones in play. Like it's a big name. It is. You'd think they could do something like that. They could even do Seth Jones and Patrick Laine for Ooh, Jack Eichel. Wow. Because Laine is an RFA this year, I believe, mm-hmm. and uh, didn't have a super great year last year. I don't know. That just seems like it would make sense and maybe would make Columbus fans a little happy getting Jack Eichel. Well, yeah. I mean, anybody... <laughs> Mm, not anybody. Got, no, I don't no, wanna... listen, listen. <laughs> I'm not saying anybody. I'm saying all teams, mm-hmm. the majority of their fans are casual fans. Yes. They are absolutely not as fucking neck deep in it as we are. You know, sometimes and, I envy it. Well, yeah. C- can you imagine watching your team lose and not caring? No. <laughs> I cared when Montreal <laughs> lost. <laughs> If I'm rooting for a team and they lose, it hurts me, even right. if they're not my team. So when it is my team, it's like the end of the world. Absolutely. But I can't imagine how these people do it. No, I don't know how they do it either. I don't know if it's just they don't have the time to make it their hobby, really. It's just something that they live close to this team, so they're going to be like, hey, I like Fair. this team. Or they like another sport more. Right. 
not everybody likes hockey. There's basketball, baseball, fucking football. football. I don't know what else is there. Golf. <laughs> Golf. <Tennis. laughs> but yeah, but what was I saying? How uh, fans are casual fans. Most casual fans. So casual fans are going to hear big names mm-hmm. and they're going to be like, fuck yeah, do that. Mm-hmm. Not knowing anything about their own system or that player or how that player could fit into their system. Oh my God, that's what they're doing. Who? That's what they're doing. Chicago. Yes. Because they have these horrible headlines. They're like, we got Seth Jones, guys. <laughs> look, look what we did. We got Seth Jones. Oh my God, that's what they're doing. Oh, my God. They're going to trade bagels just to save Don't their PR Don't say person. it. Stop it right now. Stop it right now. Bagel's not going anywhere. They're going to trade bagel to save their PR crisis. And it's not uh, even going to work. It's not going to work. Yeah, that won't fix the problem. This is the NHL GMs. They're not smart. We've discussed this. There's no logic. If Brandon Hagel <laughs> <laughs> goes anywhere, I riot. Yes. I will personally riot. Yes. We riot at midnight. <laughs> And we go steal him back. <laughs> go kidnap him. I said, Brandon, I'm so sorry this happened to you. I'm so sorry. We will not hurt you. Just Come please back, get please. in the back seat so we can drive you back to Chicago. <laughs> because you're not allowed to leave. <laughs> sorry. We need something good here. <laughs> you have to come back. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, my God. I didn't even think about that until yeah. you just... I know, because I know you don't really think about how other people aren't like you no Uh, i'm too i'm too (laughs) entrenched in the pain you're you're fully invested like i forget that there are casual fans yeah but the majority of them are that's so weird to me isn't it like they couldn't name the people in their lineup (laughs) they're just like yeah this team needs to win it causes me anxiety if i don't know who's on the ice Uh like oh my god that's a new number who is it right the first week of a new season is horrible i was just like who is that yeah oh god in the ahl oh when we first go back if we don't have a program we're just sitting there like who is this who is this what are we doing it's horrible what's the point if i don't know who you are right because there's so much more turnover in the ahl than in the nhl oh yeah oh yeah Oh my god, what if they get Seth Jones to think that they're helping themselves? What? They think that they're helping themselves in their whole media crisis oh, by, getting, by Seth getting Seth Jones and casual fans are like, oh look, the Blackhawks did a good thing. Well, because the casual fans don't even know that the Blackhawks are having a PR crisis right now. Fair. Although casual fans probably don't know who Seth Jones is. Also that. He plays in Ohio. No, Nobody... but, I mean, he's a bigger name. He's not like... Yeah. He's not like Eichel, I don't think. Or, no. You're like... You know, it it was a drop today that... Uh, I don't remember who reported or tweeted it. I don't think <laughs> it was even like a quote-unquote report, but... Mm-hmm. They were hearing uh, rumors about Steven Stamkos leaving again. I, I saw that. Now, that's a name. That is a name. That's a name. That's a big name. Not that I want it to happen, but that's a name. Yes. I would rather that happen than Seth, Seth Jones. Jones. Yes. Okay. It's it's hard for a captain of a team to leave like that. Yeah, ask the Islanders. <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys got further in the playoffs than the Leafs did, so. It's true. It's true. Enjoy your sandwiches. You couldn't just beat Tampa so I could have a peaceful final. With sandwiches? Mm hmm. See, I said I was rooting for the Islanders too. Look you what did. happened. You did. Why am I cursed? Is this what happens after the three cups in six years? It's like, you're cursed now. Yep. No more for you. You've hit your limit. So any team I root for is just fucked. <laughs> you're just fucked, yeah. You're not allowed to be a fan. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Maybe I should stay a black. <laughs> he Hawks needs to be an anti-fan. anti-fan. Pick, a, pick a team you hate the most. Uh, right now it's my own. Well, besides them. Mm, St. Louis? Yep, that's what I was going to say. I don't want to pretend to root for St. Louis. <laughs> I don't think I could do that. No. Ew. What did we see about... I would take Colton Pareko on my team, though. That's who okay. should trade for. Hey. That would hey, show up the defense. That's a... Is he, is his contract up? I don't think so. I don't think so either. That's why I said trade for him. <laughs> trade, got you, got you. Let's see. I will look. 
Oh, they're going to be back in our division next yeah, year. Yeah, they are. Along with Colorado and Arizona. Here's... Welcome. How? Because Seattle's <laughs> kicking them out. <laughs> um, he has one year left. Okay. Yep. Hmm. At 5.5. And he's 28. All right. How old is Seth Jones? He's 26. Who are you? Yes, 26. He also has one year left. Well, duh. Said he's a free agent yep. next year. Jesus Christ. <laughs> 5.4. Oh. Isn't Keith's contract 5.5? It is that. I guess they cleared money. They're going to do it, aren't they? Don't. Mm-mm. 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 We can't talk ourselves into depression before it happens. This is what I do. I know it is. I know it is. Uh, okay, so okay. take bagel off the table absolutely he is nowhere near the table he better not he better be under the table he is under the table they (laughs) cannot reach him what realistically could the hawks trade to columbus to get seth jones like it's obvious that he's not going to resign with them and Mm -hmm. they have to trade him or lose him for nothing Mm -hmm. but everybody thought that Chicago's back was against the wall with Keith, and then they fleeced Edmonton. Yeah, that was we won that deal by a mile. Uh, Let's see. We don't, <laughs> we don't know yet. Well, I mean, just by the numbers, by the by the financial numbers. Fair. <laughs> yes. Um. Hopefully, that third round pick turns out to be like the next Braden point. Or oh, something. how great Fuck would Tampa. that be? I hate them. I said they were out of my brain. <laughs> They're not. Ah! They never will be. <laughs> probably not. They're probably gonna fucking win next year too. <laughs> don't say they go back to back to back. I don't condone that behavior. Mm. Mm. Who do you who gets to win next year in your brain then? Then is it Vegas's year? Sure. I don't know. We'll see in the playoffs if it feels like their year or not. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> who could we realistically trade? Cause trading our first round pick would be fucking dumb. Mm-hmm. Especially if you just said last offseason you've committed to a rebuild. Right. You don't go trading a first round pick for Seth Jones. Nope. Like we don't. Dylan Strom but the value doesn't add up mm-hmm. there. So you'd have to add something. And I would like to trade Dylan Strom to Seattle so they will take to Han. Mm-hmm. That would be lovely. That'd be great. That'd be fantastic. That would clear another seven point something, seven point five five million dollars off of our cap, so we could get Seth Jones and Dougie Hamilton. Really? Mm. I just this is painful. This doesn't. I don't like any of this. No. What have we done? I bad things. This isn't even happening. We're just. Making up scenarios. What if they traded Kuba League for Seth Jones? Stop. We'd never score again. <laughs> no. Cat would go through another slump. No! <laughs> it would be like the Nashville playoffs all over again, but a whole season. Oh, they would no, score three Jesus. goals all season. Jesus Christ. This I, is horrible. I don't. What have they done? What have they done? Why would they get Seth Jones? They don't have him. Yet? Yet. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to do this tomorrow, so we're going to have to do another emergency pocket. This is going to be like the Not, Yoki no, no, Haru no, no. thing all over and again. And he's in the back. I know. It's Joker, Joker jersey right, right behind there. me. Because we recorded an episode. We, we used least, him as the picture. We did. We praised him to high hell uh-huh. that whole episode. We released it uh-huh. on a Monday. Uh-huh. And it was a Tuesday. It was a they Tuesday did it. they did it. We recorded it on Wednesday. You know what? I don't think Brandon Hagel's a very good hockey player. Stop right now. Is <laughs> the reverse psychology not going to work? <laughs> I'm an anti-fan of Brandon Hagel. <laughs> of the anti-Brandon Hagel fandom. Mm, we are the presidents. <laughs> I wasn't wearing a Hagel jersey in the video that I recorded earlier today. <laughs> oh my god. But... Uh, Kurashev? What? What? Kirby Doc for Seth Jones? Courtney? Yes, Jacqueline? (laughs) (laughs) No. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like we need a 
gong back here. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, uh, it's what a, else do we have? Nothing. No, nothing. We give them signing rights to Zadorov. <laughs> Ian Mitchell? I guess. These aren't enough to make Seth Jones come here, though. Not without giving up our first round pick. Right. Which I very aggressively do not want to do. We are in a rebuild. We should definitely keep that. Yeah. <laughs> like, thankfully, Bagel alone also wouldn't get this deal done. Right. But right. I don't trust this team. They could do Suter. I wouldn't like it, but it would be better than Bagel. Well, yeah. Um, I just want to know when they're going to start signing their free agents. <laughs> it's like no team is doing that uh, yet. Nobody's done anything. It's weird, except it's Duncan quiet. Keith for Caleb Jones and a third. <laughs> uh, Duncan <laughs> Keith and Soderlund for Caleb Jones right. and a third, so then we can go get his brother from Columbus. You think that's really the plan? I was skeptical. When it was being reported that that was, like, an inkling that people had. Uh Especially when it was like, oh, trade talks have fallen through, Edmonton's out, blah, 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 maybe Vancouver Mm -hmm. for Keith. And then they did end up getting Caleb Jones, and I was like, oh, no. Mm -hmm. Were they right? Mm. (laughs) Because, like, sometimes where there's smoke, there's fire. Sometimes. Not always. But it was very interesting that this was even talked about for so long, because usually when the Hawks do anything, you don't hear about it until it's smacking it's you in the face. Yes. The, everything is a surprise. Yeah. So for oh. a while, I didn't even think this was going to happen. No. I was like, oh, it's just going to dissipate. Right. It's just going to be little talkings here and there, little yeah. whispers in the background. Yeah. And then they'll be like, oh, trade talks fell through. Keith is just going to play out his contract in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Nope. No. No, he's gone. He is. We don't have a number two. We don't. Or a number seven, or a 65, (laughs) or a 50, (laughs) or an 81, or should I keep going? (laughs) But we've still got a 19 and an 88. Uh, Could you imagine if neither of those guys were on the team? Courtney. Like... It's not even confirmed that Tabes will be ready for game right. one. So right now it's just <laughs> it's Patrick just Kane. Kane. <laughs> That's it. Oh my god. It's just him. Only Patty. Only Patty. And yeah, I know. Baby but is <laughs> he's so opinionated about Patrick Kane. He always comes in to scream about something. Last time it was goalies. Now it's Patrick, <laughs> Patrick Kane. <laughs> I know, buddy. <laughs> like, I... This is not a full... rot. Like, it's... It seems <sighs> disjointed and broken. 100%. I, just look at it and pretend their names are not there. Like, that's not an NHL team, is no. it? No. <laughs> that's like... uh, It's like Rockford Extended. Yeah. Basically is. Yeah. I mean, aside from, like, Kat and Kubalik. Right. And Strom. And I, I would be very shocked if Strom was on the roster next year. I agree. Oh, I forgot we had Brett Connolly. <laughs> How about that? How about that? And Henrik Bjorkstrom, the guy we got from Florida. Uh-huh. I... You know, watching this team last year. Okay. They started off very bad. Yes. And then they looked competent. And they then did. they looked good. They looked good for a little for while. For a good stretch of time. And you're thinking, huh, maybe they just found something. This is a good combination mm-hmm. for a team. And they're going to just keep building off of this, blah, blah, blah. And then you go into the playoffs. And could you imagine this team? <laughs> in the playoffs this year? Against anybody, really. This team, including... Uh, at least Keith and, and, and yeah and yeah we'll go back to what the roster was like last so year. So Keith and Kane, Keith and Kane, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> so subtract uh, Duncan Keith from that. 
And it's just Kane? Yep. That's not a playoff team. No. I can't even ima- I can't put this team in the place of even any of the first round positions. Like Toronto might have gotten out of the first round if they played this team. If they played this team, yes. And that's I just saw your something. eye twitch. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, what if Toronto lost to the the Hawks? Oh, my God. You got Austin Matthews. You got Willie Nylander. You got Mitch Marner. You basically got William Nylander, let's be fair, (laughs) with how the playoffs went this year. The other two, on the other hand. Oh, God. What the fuck are they going to do in the offseason? They did re-sign Wayne Train, though. So they're Yes, yes. Two years. Two years? Yeah. Jason Spezza re-signed. I saw that. So they're getting older. Cool. Uh (laughs) (laughs) No, I like those two signings. I do, too. Those are good. Um, Joe Thornton and Austin Matthews were partying with Kylie Jenner the other night. I saw that. What the fuck? What? They were at the UFC thing. Yeah, they were with Beaver and Kylie and all of them. Weird. It made more sense for Austin, but then but Joe Thornton's Joe just Thornton. in the background with his like, big ass beard. <laughs> big old like, bro- who invited beard. Grandpa? <laughs> <laughs> it's very strange. It's so odd. They, was that the 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 fight that Connor McDavid's leg exploded? Connor McDavid? Not Connor McDavid. McGregor? That's the one. <laughs> Jesus. I'm like. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> He was in that fight, you know? Oh. <laughs> I didn't know if I, like, missed a meme no, or something. No, no, you were totally correct. Okay, Connor my, McGregor. My, I got my Connors, the mix. It's fine. I mean. The Connor mix. They're you know, Edmonton's not going anywhere anyway. No, you no, know what? But, Duncan Keith's going to win the Norris next year. I said it earlier. There it goes. There he is. Could you imagine? I don't even know how it would feel. If he just takes off next year and every play he makes is. Just has. The season of a lifetime at yes. age 38 age in 38 Edmonton. After 16 years in Chicago. And he's just all of a sudden like Norris Trophy winning Keith greasiest. again. I don't like this. I don't like this one bit, especially looking at this defensive lineup that we have. Uh-uh. Because there's got to be more moves. Oh, there has to be. There has to be. And I really don't want one of them to be Seth Jones. But uh, I think I'd rather sign Dougie Hamilton as a free agent. At least you're not trading something. Right. But that doesn't fix your problems. He's not a number one defenseman. Mm -mm. But what if he was put in a position where he had to be? Well, it's either going to be him or Connor Murphy is being put in the position where they have to be. Right. Connor Murphy should never be your number one defenseman. I feel like he's a very good player. He's a very good defenseman. He is. Very solid number three. Absolutely. Not a number one. Or a number two. I just feel like he injures fairly easily as well. He's got back problems. Or his helmet falls off. What was the the deal with... strap is over his eyes. What was the deal with that? There was a stretch of games where Connor Mc... No, Murphy. Murphy. Connor McMurphy. (laughs) (laughs) Connor McGregor Murphy. Oh, my Connors are just... Balled together into one ring. They're all having issues There's lately. There's a counter issue. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he couldn't keep his fucking helmet on. It was very weird. It, like, and it was the o- he was the only one it was happening to. And it led to a goal every time. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> like, just tighten your strap a little bit or something. <laughs> or just take the penalty and stop the play. Like, right. Something. But just Why? when it, the strap was over <laughs> just, his eyes. Just right and- <laughs> That, that was the <coughs> definition of the Blackhawks this year. You look silly, Connor. Also, <laughs> talking about Blackhawks defense this year okay. and bringing this right back around to mm-hmm. this trade topic. Uh, do you remember the last on ice memory we have of Duncan Keith? Oh, no. Him running face first into the official's knee. Oh, that was the last one. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. And then he went out with a concussion for the rest of the season. Yeah. Corny. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. Yep. 
16 years of service for the Chicago Blackhawks, two Norris trophies, three Stanley Cups, Olympic gold medals, all of this, the all-star, Conn Smythe. His last on-ice memory is Getting running kneed in the face by, a, by an by official a as <sighs> the puck escaped him on the blue line and he went and, to try to chase it and, and just and fell and, and went head first. to a goal as well. That's upsetting. <laughs> Keith deserves better. <laughs> well, now he's got Edmonton, so. <laughs> oh, no. Are they going to put him on the power play? <laughs> What's their defense look like? Can we pull up the Oilers real quick? We can. I have it right here. Hey. They have a lot of defensemen. Wow, yeah, they do. Oh, my goodness. Oh, they need to re-sign Tyson Berry. Uh, Darnell Nurse, mm-hmm. which I would have loved to get instead of for Caleb sure. Jones. For sure, for sure. Duncan Keith. Yeah, hey, Just, look at that. Uh, very weird. Um, oh, you saw Keith that tweet with him in a in an Oilers jersey, right? In that cursed image. Yes, yes I did. it was terrible. Ethan Bear, Chris Russell, Evan Bouchard, Philip Broberg, William Legison, and then they have. Like? Cuckoo. Slater Cuckoo, Tyson Berry, Dmitry Kulikov, and Adam Larson as UFAs. Oh, Adam Larson's a UFA? That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Never forget the Taylor Hall for Adam Larson trade. Yeah. That was a day. It was. That happened, and then the Shea Weber for P.K. Subban Such a trade. weird... Yeah. And I think that was the same day that... Um, Stamkos re-signed or was something about Stamkos. Yeah. I don't know. That was a day. It was a busy day. PK is still in Jersey, right? Mm-hmm. Huh. He is. I think Edmonton's defense is better than ours. Yes. I'll take Darnell Nurse and Duncan Keith as a first line pairing any day. Oh, any day. Absolutely. <laughs> We don't have a first pair. We don't. (laughs) We have Connor Connor Murphy Murphy. and Calvin DeHaan. Oh. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Still got him. Still got him. I know. Him and his falling apart body. Yeah, his hips and his shoulders and... Nikita Zadorov, if they re-sign him, which they were rumored to be interested in. I like him sometimes... But like, I don't like him enough. Not to often sign enough, him. exactly. I was like, oh, this was fun for a year. Thanks for yeah. everything you did. Now you can go somewhere else. Yeah. Please take off. Yeah. Be free. But that's not even the strangest part of today. You know, there were a lot of strange things that happened today, mm-hmm. honestly. So I woke up this morning, right? Okay. And it I was did that like, too. Huh. Oh, hmm. Look at that. Look at us. It was like 10, 11, maybe. Maybe It was like 10. Yeah. And I pick up my phone, as I do in the morning, to make sure my team hasn't completely (laughs) imploded. Mm -hmm. And I see people retweeting the senators that they hired Pierre Maguire. That was today? That was today. That feels like a week ago. That was today. Oh, my God. (laughs) And that just set the tone. For the rest of the day, honestly. I literally could not believe that that was today. (laughs) I thought that it was a fake account. (laughs) I looked at that I think everybody that saw it thought it was. Yeah. I looked at that check mark about 50 times. I was like... Really? Really? I was like trying to squint to make it go away. (laughs) And I was like, all right, where's the misspelling in here? This is somebody Uh doing a troll job. No. No, no, the senators legit. hired him. I want to say director of player development. Development is mm-hmm. that what it is? Yes. Do, do, do. Oh my gosh! So many things happened today. It's it taking did. me forever to even scroll down there in my likes. Good God! All right, <laughs> vice president of player development, mm-hmm. Pierre Maguire. All right, so we knew the senators. Were a mess, right? Yeah, but they were looking like they had promise. It's true. When they finished the season, they were playing better. Mm -hmm. If they had played like that all year, they probably would have made the playoffs. Yep. Pierre Maguire. This was not on my radar. No. (laughs) 
Was, was it on anyone's radar? I don't Did think so. Did anyone think that Pierre Maguire was going to be hired by anyone to be vice president of player development? I don't think so. There were no rumors or anything. That's why I thought it was a troll job yeah. when I woke up. But I saw, I, don't, I think it was Tracy Myers and somebody else had retweeted it. So yeah. it popped up on my phone. So I was like, well, if they're retweeting it, it must be, right? Yeah. And so that was what I woke up to this morning. That really sets a tone, huh? Yes. So then I went about my morning. I was just laying on my couch playing Animal Crossing Mm -hmm. when my phone started going off and like, oh, hearing more rumblings, like you said, about Mm -hmm. Keith for Caleb Jones might get done at some point, still working on it, blah, Mm -hmm. blah, blah. Like, okay. That's fine. Put my phone down, go Mm -hmm. back to Animal Crossing, look at it a few minutes later. It's like more people are talking Mm -hmm. about it and then all of a sudden it's done. And (sighs) so then I'm like, oh, fuck, I should probably get up and do something. (laughs) So then I start putting all my notes together for that. And we all know how that went down that (laughs) and then Montreal, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So then I get all of that done and get back on the Twitter machine and see that the Hawks might be interested in Marc Andre Fleury? Dude. What? First of all, how? Uh huh. Second of all, why didn't we just keep Leonard if that uh-huh. was. Uh huh. We are rebuilding. We are going to get the 37 year old building. We are rebuilding. <laughs> we need to get that average age back up now that we got rid of Duncan Keith. Not even that it would be Flurry. a bad move no. because Flurry just won it, the fucking Vesna trophy. Right, yeah. But I, he's got one year left at seven point whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. We've got the cap room Yeah, we now. just cleared that cap space. We could do it. At, mm, mm, mm. Why? 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 <laughs> I mean, it's not like we have like a... A top, top, top of the line goalie. Like, no. yeah, we've got Kevin. Yes, and Flurry would Fleury be a great. Would... What? Subban was his backup in Vegas. Sure was. Your eyes are twitching again. I can feel it this time. <laughs> I was going to say that for Kevin, that would be a great goaltender to learn from. And then I realized yeah, that Subban. Malcolm we could still, have learned from we him. We still have him. Yes. yes. He's one of our goalies. What if they run the don't, three goalie system? Don't. <laughs> I knew right where Flurry you were. <laughs> and Malcolm and Kevin. Uh, that hurts me. Clearly, Flurry would be your starter. Well, duh. I think my brain is exploding. Just why? Why? It's why? just the biggest question. Why? Why would we why? do that? Who, who thought this was something that needed to... What? <laughs> I I saw that it was tweeted and it was just by like one person. But then like And then the here pe- comes Scott Powers I'll with his athletic that's article. What I'm like they're interested. Yeah. Like Scott. I started seeing people that were like have higher cred actually uh-huh. like retweet it and write articles. And I'm like Uh-huh. What is going on right now? I don't uh, know. I don't know why. <laughs> first of all, I don't even know what comes first. First and, is why. Yes. Yes. And so is second. <laughs> so is second. Yes. After those, like, that's clearly not a long-term plan because mm-hmm. he's 37 right. and has one year left on his deal. Mm-hmm. You would have to trade for him. Right. What if? Oh no! What? Oh no! No, it's not that. It's just. Uh. What if somehow we ended up sending Subban back to Vegas in the deal where we? <laughs> because <laughs> we start off with Leonard. Uh huh. We get Malcolm, mm-hmm. and then we end up with N- Flurry, Flurry sending <laughs> Subban <laughs> back, back to where to be with Leonard. Go back where you came from. <laughs> We messed up the first time, <laughs> so now we're kind of redoing it, just with the other guy. Yep. Uh, I still don't... 
I'll never understand what happened with Leonard and no. and why the Leafs had him for thirty seconds and then th- he went to to mm-hmm. Vegas and more money retention. I it's just such a strange. But just why? Why exactly? Why didn't we keep him? We could have done that. They knew he they... wanted to stay here. Yeah, we've we've yelled about this already. They I knew they first, weren't just... going to keep Corey. So why not keep the younger starting goaltender? Right. I, I, so now I, they want Flurry. <laughs> and again, 37. Can you picture him in a Hawks jersey? No. No. And then clearly you're telling Kevin to go fuck himself. We oh, don't think yeah. you're a starting that, goaltender. That would be a big fuck you to Kevin for sure. After what he did for you this year <laughs> with you giving him nothing to work with. Yes. If you don't think that he is going to be a starter going forward, then you acquire a goalie and let him go somewhere else and use one of the other two as the backup. Right. Uh, but also, we went over the goaltending free agents a couple episodes ago mm-hmm. with the amount of free agent <laughs> goaltenders... And defensemen, why are the Blackhawks rumored to be in on two very large names in Marc-Andre Fleury and Seth Jones that they would have to give up assets for that we do not have? We do not have. For guys who have one year left on their deal, who both do not fit in with a rebuild Mm -mm. when they just committed to a rebuild in the last offseason. It was not that short of an off... uh, uh, That short of Of a a rebuild. The oh, rebuild. Yeah. No. The rebuild is not over. The rebuild was 56 games. No. <laughs> no. We're done. No, we're not. We're very much not. How does any of that make sense? Doesn't. It doesn't. Doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. And if you trade for Flurry, you got to protect him. Well, yeah. So then Seattle could take Kevin. And I, then you just don't have a starting goaltender after next year because I doubt Flurry would re-sign at age 38. <laughs> what are they doing? What are they doing? Go they sign do? Chris Drieger. He's a free yeah, agent. Yeah, yeah, we've... we've that would this. be the smart thing to do. Mm-hmm. You could sign anybody. James Reimer's a fucking free agent. Peter Morazic's a free agent. The whole Carolina <laughs> roster is a fucking free agent in goal. Like... Why Flurry? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Not even a little You're bit. You're not a contending team. He needs to play for a contender. You saw mm-hmm. how well he played last season, how well he played in the playoffs. Why would you be like, you're on a rebuilding team now? Sorry. Oof. Oof. That's that's a kick in the face to him. Right? He let, let, <sighs> should go back to Pittsburgh because they need goaltending. That's mm-hmm. what fucked them in the playoffs. Sure is. So go back to where you came from, where everybody loved you and you loved playing and try to help them win another one before Crosby and Malkin are done. Like, I don't understand what this team is doing. I don't think they know what they're doing. I don't think they do either. In terms of anything. Fair point. Fair point. Again, it's big name hunting. Yes. Seth Jones, Mark andre Fleury. Uh, who's next? For what? For why? Why? Why and what? What are and we going what? to give away for what? these? <sighs> we don't have the things to give away to get the big names. No. Kirby Duck. Don't you? Mm-mm. I would be so mad. I'd be more mad if it was Bagel, but I'd be yeah, really mad. Yeah, yeah, same here. Like, it would be absolutely unacceptable to yes. send Kirby anywhere. Yes. But it wouldn't, like, ruin my life. Like, right. Like it would with Bagel. Yeah. And I don't think Strom has enough value to get Mm-mm. either of those trades done. No. What so, is he, like a third liner? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I just can't see how he would have any value after this season where, for the majority of it, they were missing their top two centers. Right. They were missing Taves all season, mm-hmm. missing Doc for the big majority of it. And so it was his for the taking. Right. And he ended up being a healthy scratch or playing on wing by the end of the season. Mm-hmm. How does that guy have value anymore? He doesn't. 
to me no. in my mind in my eyes he only has one year left on his deal i think that is the only redeeming quality i'm checking that to make sure yes one year left <laughs> It just makes the most sense to go to Seattle. Just like yeah. hit the cap floor. He's got all the tools. The toolbox is just broken. Mm -hmm. And the tools are scattered everywhere and he can't put them together. Mm -hmm. uh, everything this team does confuses me. Literally every single thing that they do confuses me. Yeah. I'm One not, way or another. I'm not following this at <laughs> all. I don't think they have a thought train to follow. I don't think they do. They're just doing things. I guess. <laughs> You're talking about doing things. <laughs> It'll be interesting, I guess. I guess to see who they protect on Saturday when they have to turn in their lists mm -hmm. for the expansion draft, which is next Wednesday in the middle of the week. 23rd. 23rd. Wednesday. Yep. <laughs> 10 days from tomorrow. Huh. I don't know. Mm -mm. I would assume they don't make another trade until after that. I don't know what they could possibly do. It's S not saying that they won't do Seth it. Jones. I don't, I don't see it. Flurry. I don't. How? I don't know. <laughs> I don't see how they could do these things. We're gonna without ripping our team apart more than it already is. Our first round pick. Don't for Mark Andre Fleury. Why? He's thirty seven years old. Sure is. <laughs> yes, he is an elite goalie mm -hmm. for sure. But he's got like two or three years tops. But I could, I, I see it in my head now. I'm just seeing all the tweets flooding in about a first round pick for Marc Andre Fleury. I can't handle that. I don't know what I would do. You know, I probably wouldn't even have a reaction at this point. If it was Seth it. Jones, I would get mad. Mm -hmm. But if it was Fleury, I would just. <laughs> Fleury for okay. a first. Okay. Fleury for a first. Whatever, Hawks. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Just do your thing, I guess. I guess. Because I don't know what that thing is that you are doing, but you are doing they don't something. Either. They don't either. They're just doing. There's no clear thing to be done. Nope. They're just doing. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> oh, hell. Hail. Well... That was today's excitement. Today <sighs> has been a long day. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It all started because Pierre because Maguire Pierre got hired by the senators. <laughs> it threw the whole world off. <laughs> Everything got screwed up. Yeah. Yeah. And now we just don't have Duncan Keith anymore. We don't. We really don't. Like, we don't. It doesn't feel real. Nah. He gone. I don't think that i like it <laughs> but like the trade was fine in and of itself yeah I just don't financially think it made a ton of it. sense for us i guess we won that trade by the money yeah but we also didn't really need it this year no but, they, but maybe they're they, good they're working up to something obviously you're right and i don't <sighs> like that you're right <laughs> What else is new? <laughs> because it's going to be something that sucks. Yeah, because they can't go in off season without doing something that really sucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Last year it was just like, oh, we're not bringing you back, Corey. Thanks for the two cups. Mm. You're just gone. Mm -hmm. Go sign in New Jersey and then retire before training camp or during training camp, whatever it was. I still haven't processed it. No. Like, I can say it, and it doesn't feel like a thing that happened. Mm -hmm. It's like fiction. Like, now I feel like I'm in a dream because I <laughs> talked about it. Like, I'm not real anymore. I just disappeared into the ether. There's nobody sitting here on the video anymore. Courtney, what? recenter. I can't. I'm having a crisis now. <laughs> oh, fuck. What a strange day. 
What a strange day. Such a strange day. Now the Leafs are probably going to do something just to really top it off. How nice would that be? It depends on what it is. I just... Yep. Mitch Marner for (laughs) Seth Jones. Oh, my God. (laughs) You wouldn't. (laughs) What if they did that? (laughs) Courtney! Which team says no? It's got to be... You would value Marner over Jones, would you not? Yes. Okay. So then wouldn't it be That's the like, Leafs that would say... Personally, I would value Marner more because I don't like Seth Jones. Okay, but like... But like a number one Statistically, defenseman. yeah. By GM standards, I guess, <laughs> even though he's That's... trending downward. <laughs> He played like 60 minutes in that five overtime game last year, so he's clearly a number one defenseman. Uh huh. Mitch Marner. Mitch Marner for, for Seth, Seth Jones. Jones. <laughs> Mitch Marner for Seth Jones and Patrick Line. Oh. No way. <laughs> you have Austin Matthews on the right side on the power play, Patrick Line on the left side. You got. Rass was Sandine at the point, feeding either of them oh for one timers. The number one and number two pick in that draft year. Austin was one and yeah. Patrick was two. Oh my god, this needs oh. to happen. Oh, the Leafs. Everybody was like, who's better, Austin Matthews or Patrick Line? Patrick Line is going to be the better player. What if Put they end up on the together. same line? Oh Put my them god. together. Dubis. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. We are all over the place tonight. Yeah, well, Pierre Maguire got signed by he the Senators sure this morning. <laughs> that he did. But Mitch Marner for Seth Jones and Patrick Laine. That would be a hell of a trade. Would Toronto have to add? Yes. What? <laughs> <laughs> How much would they have to add? Whether that just be retaining a bit. Oh, fuck. That would suck. <laughs> that, that contract's long. Yeah, How many is. years does he have left? <laughs> Hell, did he sign the maximum? I can't even remember at this point. He is signed until 24, 25. Mm. Yeah. His contract ends a year after Austin's Mm -hmm. and Willie's, and it ends the same time as John Diverse. Oh, buddy. Mm. Would they have to add a player, a pick? A roster player, a prospect. Hmm. Hard to say. Let's see. So they would be getting rid of a defenseman mm-hmm. and a winger. Right. They need centers. Yes. William Nylander <gasps> and Alexander Kerfoot for Seth Jones and Patrick Laine. So we're not doing minor anymore? What what did I say? You said uh, did I say William Nylander? You said Willie. I meant Mitch. I was looking <laughs> at Willie. I meant Mitch. <laughs> Mitch Marner, Alex Kerfoot, for Seth Jones and Patrick Laine. That might work. Maybe. Is that enough? Now I'm starting to think it skews more with Columbus having to add. Now I think I tipped you it think too so? far. I th- I do. But maybe I'm just overvaluing my own players at this point and undervaluing Columbus's. Cause like, I think that evens it out pretty well. I, I don't know what accurate value there is because Line is unsigned, so mm-hmm. he's an RFA. Right. I think. I keep saying this. I'm not actually <laughs> certain about that, but I'm pretty sure that he is. Yeah, he is. Okay, cool. So he, he's unsigned. He doesn't have a contract. Seth Jones is Seth Jones, and yes. you can either re-sign him, give him an extension after next season, whatever. <laughs> Mitch would be good. <laughs> Who is this? Oh, I'm on Edmonton now. Uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Oh, right, he just signed Goes that, until didn't forever. He? Does yeah. that say 28, 29? Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> yep. For 5.125. <laughs> wow. 
Wow. Um, hmm. So they'd be getting a center and a winger. So Kerfoot's not a first line center, though. No. But. But you're not going to get Austin or right. Tavares. I don't know. I don't know what I've done. I might have just messed everything up. <laughs> I don't know how we ended I up think here. <laughs> Seth Jones should just play the year in Columbus and yeah. sign wherever the fuck he wants to next offseason. That sounds like a good plan. I think so. So mm-hmm. I can stop going through this <laughs> thinking that the fucking Hawks are going to sign him when it doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. But if they don't uh, trade for him, they could trade for Flurry. Oh, God damn it! We're back here. I just... Why uh, would we... Do- I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I almost wish... Okay, if that's going to happen, I wish it wouldn't have leaked. Like, I, yeah. I would have rather just been, like, slapped upside the face with that. I think me too. I don't want to sit here and think about that because, as we've said probably a thousand times already, this doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. Then we'd have four goalies <laughs> unless we send Malcolm back to Vegas. Then we still have three. Mm-hmm. Unless Seattle takes one of our goalies, but I don't think that'll happen because there's going to be better ones there's available. There's going to be better ones, yeah. Everything's just so uncertain until after next Wednesday when we know who Seattle takes. And then comes the uh, entry draft, so then trades always happen then. <sighs> What is he doing? He's trying to eat my charger cord. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, do you have anything else for this I think disjointed we've, pain session? I think we've been everywhere that we need to go. I think I so. I wasn't going to say could go because we could go very oh, far with this. We could go. We could go on and on with We this. could go into the depths of things that don't make sense that could happen. But... I think we've hit where we need to go. Probably yeah. past where we need to go. Probably, because now I'm trading Nylander. Or no, yeah. <laughs> Not Nylander. Apparently I'm trading Nylander. Oh, well, I where keep is saying he going? It. Does I, he want to be with his brother too? <laughs> yes. Yes, he does. Bring him home. Bring him home. Bring him home to Chicago. All the brothers. All the brothers. We are now the brother team. That'd be amazing. <laughs> have the... How would we get William Nylander? <laughs> we trade for Seth Jones, right? <laughs> and then we trade <laughs> Seth Jones to Toronto <laughs> for Willie. Yeah. I don't know what we give up for Jones initially, but... <laughs> but, but... But... We could send both Jones brothers... Oh. Not the Jonas Brothers. Not the, the Jonas Jones, Brothers. But the Jones Brothers. The Jones Brothers. To Toronto. And <laughs> we could get Willie. And hell, we could get fucking Justin Hall back. We mm-hmm. we drafted him. I and mean, then let him wither away and basically kill his career in the ECHL Jesus until he just Christ. went to Toronto. <laughs> and now he's a $2 million defender. Somehow. Yeah, we could do that. Or we could get Travis Dermott, who just resigned. Right. Or get Morgan Riley. Ooh. Hmm. He's been rumored to be leaving after I don't hate that. Year or two. I don't hate that one at all. All right, so we acquire okay. Seth Jones. <laughs> <laughs> and then we ship the Jones brothers, not the Jonas brothers. No, the Jones brothers. To Toronto. To Toronto. For Willie to reunite, reunite him with his brother. Yes. And you think he Durham. would take? You think he would take a pay cut to be with his brother? I don't think he would need to. What is he at? Six point nine. Mm. That was covered by Keith leaving. Basically, true. true. We could afford that. Yeah, and then if Seattle takes one or both of Dahan and Strom, like mm-hmm. we've really got room to play with it's and true. get crazy. <laughs> And then we could fucking get Flurry too. Why not? Just go fucking, fucking Flurry, out. Riley, Nylander. Yeah, they're all Hawks now. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, I said Travis Dermott. I meant Morgan Riley. I. I know what you mean. 
I got, I got there. We're on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. Morgan Riley, William Morgan Nylander. Come to Chicago. Blackhawks. Yes. <laughs> for the <laughs> Jones brothers. After we acquire Seth Jones for some ungodly reason. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, now have we hit everywhere we need to hit? <laughs> I, I don't think we needed to hit that at all. <laughs> We didn't, but we went there anyway. Pushed it past the point of lines that needed to be hit. <clears throat> Typically what we do. Yeah. At least it didn't end on a depressing note this time. No, we're good. We got we I got can find the, a way. Don't do it. <laughs> Stop. You're thinking right now. Stop it. Quinny. Okay. Thank you. That was from Sunrise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, this has been from Center Ice. Thank you so very much for listening and uh Heck. You know where to find us. Duncan Keith is gone. He is. If you're listening on the YouTube, please go on over to Apple Podcasts and rate and review because we would appreciate it. If you're listening to the audio only and you're not on iTunes, just go do the same thing and then go over to YouTube and subscribe to that too. You could see the whole Montreal Canadiens wrap up video. Um, yeah, social media links are in the description from mm-hmm. centerice.com, has everything. I think that's about it yeah. that that covers all those bases i think you're right all right well so are we gonna have the kneelander brothers or the jones brothers kneelander absolutely that's my preferred anyway we'll probably end up with jones fuck <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs>